प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समीप रहो अमारी ए ह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम आईडी और बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation puja guru ji puja santo shri ji bhagat and all of you bhaktos jai swami narayan today we are going to learn about a sant in the time of bhagwan swami narayan that was the very first sant that was initiated by the hands of bhagwan swami narayan the very first sant in bhagwan swami narayan's time after entering satsang after ending his van vicharan bhagwan swami narayan liber- not only liberated but initiated 2000 more than 2000 saints in his short time here on earth looking at the records from the previous avatars and incarnations no other incarnation or avatar has ever initiated so many saints in that time period era where they had stayed on earth only bhagwan swami narayan initiated more than 2000 saints and made over 2 million devotees in his lifetime at that time such was bhagwan swami narayan's divine aura you can say such was bhagwan swami narayan's divine personality you can say such was bhagwan swami narayan's divine attributes kalyankari attributes due to that very factor everyone was attracted towards him may it be regular householder or may it be a very low casted uh, uh untouchable or may it be even the most foul of people with the wicked tendencies and with many vices may it be even the britishers and may it be even people from other religions but bhagwan swami narayan was bhagwan swami narayan and due to that no one nothing had even a scope or a chance of stopping him from fulfilling his mission here on earth for the time span of 49 years bhagwan swami narayan as i said before initiated 2000 saints and from these 2000 saints the very first saint that he initiated his name was vyapkanand swami vyapkanand swami was such a sant that before he had become a sant he was known by the name of sital das and in that time he was roaming around visiting sacred places trying to find bhagwan as he roamed around he understood that ramanand swami was a very very great saint even god himself due to other speculation so he decided to set out to where ramanand swami was he found out that ramanand swami was in farani so he started his way there and when he made it there it was the 13th day of ramanand swami's passing and there the sabha had gathered the assembly bhagwan swami narayan was there along with thousands and thousands of devotees and he came and sat he didn't know at first 
what this whole satsang assembly sabha was for. He just thought that it was just a gathering. And soon, this in the middle, this Sajan Swami is seated. But soon after, Raman Swami will come. And that's what he was looking for. He was looking for his, his God in the form of his Guru, who he believed was Raman and Swami. So as he was seated there, Maharaj addressed the assembly, saying that now you shall follow these kinds of niyams, and you should stay in these accords, and, you know, setting the guidelines. And then he finally, in his Bhagwan speech, finally Bhagwan said that, you know, due to Ramanan Swami's passing. And right there and then, when Sita Das heard Bhagwan Swami Narayan's words, he was ready to get up. Right there and then, Bhagwan caught him in the eye. And he said, where are you going, Sita Das? The Sabha has just begun. And Sita Das said that, how could I stay here now, since the one who I was looking for is not here? I want to go to a different pilgrimage to find God. And in that time, Bhagwan Swaminarayan was initiating his chapters of Samadhi. Samadhi is kind of like a trance state. It is the last state of Ashtang Yoga. The fruits of Ashtang Yoga is Samadhi. Now in Samadhi, one soul gets the divine bliss, experiences the divine bliss of Bhagwan's divine abode, Akshardham. And <clears throat> the very reason why Bhagwan Swaminarayan started these chapters was to help those devotees because in that time he didn't have any saints. He didn't have saints to explain that, you know, that this is Sajan Swami, I am the Supreme Lord. So instead of Bhagwan speaking himself, more than words, experience plays a bigger role in individuals' change. So due to that, by the snap of Bhagwan's fingers, by even mere glance, <clears throat> By even merely listening to the chakris, meaning the wooden sandals, the chut chut, that noise <clears throat> that comes from the, the, the wood when it hits the ground, even by listening to that sound, even by Bhagwan snapping his fingers, he would put hundreds and thousands of people into samadhi. And not only for one minute, two minutes, one hour, six hours, days and days and months and months. If a person from externally looked at the person's body, <clears throat> they would directly think that this person is dead, but that person was not dead, but it was in a deep trance-like state in samadhi. And due to that, Bhagwan Swaminarayan performed these kinds of acts of samadhi so Others can understand and develop the firm conviction that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Sarvopari, Supreme Lord of Lords. So in that time, he Bhagwan Swaminarayan has had initiated these chapters of Samadhi, and there in that grand assembly, there is many many seated, and Bhagwan Swaminarayan there, for the very first time in Faneni, the village, he uttered his name that he brought from Akshardham, his original name, the name which is not compared to any other name, cannot be compared to any other name, just like how Bhagwan cannot be compared to anyone. And he spoke from his mouth for the very first time in this village, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. And Sital Das, as he was about to get up, Maharaj said, no, don't get up. Why don't you chant a couple of times this mantra, Maha Mantra, that I have introduced to all my devotees, and I am instructing all my devotees to chant it now from on while they do their mara in their, in their puja, even outside, while they're doing dhun. This mantra should be chanted. This was his instructions. 
So she told us is like very very saddened due to finding out the news that Sadguru Ramanand Swami, the one who is looking for, has passed away. So in desperation, he started to chant Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. And just in a couple of moments, he went into trance. He went into trance and he saw and experienced Akshardham. Now there, in Akshardham, Bhagwan was seated in the middle with a grand, grand uh, uh, siyasan. <clears throat> Just like this golden one, a very grand siyasan with many, many gems and pearls and different various decorations. And Bhagwan is seated there and Ramanan Swami was folding his hands, seeming and if someone observed from the outside, praying to Maharaj, serving him. And he became excited. Sital Das is like, just the one who I wanted to meet. So Guru Ramanan, Guru Ramanan, he called out. And Ramanan Swami said that Siddhal Das, I'm glad you're here, but in reality, the Supreme Lord of Lords is right in front of you, here seated in this in this Sihasan. You should wor you shall worship him. He is the God of gods, he is the Lord of Lords. Siddhal Das <clears throat> he was completely baffled. He said, what are you saying? You are God. I believe you to be God. And Raman and Swami over there tried to convince Sital Das, but Sital Das had a, such a firm conviction of Raman and Swami that he could not believe and understand that this Sajan and Swami that you met in Fanani and right here in this Akshar Dham, they are one. So then Bhagwan Swami Narayan said, Okay, Sital Das, not only Raman and Swami was there, but other avatars, countless mukto, countless liberated souls worshipping Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the middle. Think about that assembly. That assembly in Akshradham is so vast, is so humongous that there is no way of counting or there is no way of fathoming the greatness just like right now in space scientists find a picture of a black hole and they fathom the size of it they fathom they understand <clears throat> how far is far it is far it is from calculations from physics and they find far distance galaxies and everything but they can't get an exact picture perfect measurement of how big the universe is how grand it is because it's just not in their comprehension Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Akshar Dham is we can't see similar but just to put kind of a perspective to it it's so vast it's so it's so big, broad, that there is no way of measuring how grand it is. But it is there, it's here, it's there, it's everywhere, but it's a matter of understanding. But not getting into that topic, <clears throat> going back into Sital Das's life, Maharaj said that Siddhartha House was a little baffled, but he understood that, okay, now this is Sajanan Swami. Okay, so Raman Swami, after talking a little bit to him, he started to think, yes, this must be true. So then what happened was that Bhagwan's Agna, he said that if you truly, Siddhartha Das wanted to do Pujan, meaning perform the Pujan of Maharaj and all of the Muktos there meaning all the countless liberated souls, they have forms there. The same form as Bhagwan, that's what kind of form your soul receives when you go to Akshardham. No one is fat or thin, tall or short, dark skin, light skin, nothing like that in Akshardham. Everyone is just one equal. Just how Bhagwan's form is, that's how one's soul's form develops there. That's how Akshardham is. 
it's that's Bhagwan gives that person, gives not that person gives that soul a body just similar to his. This is his gift, we can say, to us souls. So what happened was Sital Das wanted to perform the pujan of Maharaj and everyone. So at first, Bhagwan wanted to convince him 100% that obviously he is the Supreme Lord of Lords. He is not just a mere avatar. He is he's not avatar, he is avatari, meaning the Lord of Lords. So he said that, <clears throat> here, let's, re let's read exactly what he said. Okay, here we go. He wanted to do the puja of Sri Hari in the environment, but he was caught in a dilemma. How was, it, how was he to offer his puja to all the avatars and muktos and Sri Hari at once? Because there were so many, countless. There were an infinite number of beings and only one of him. Sri Hari read his mind and said, Sital Das, why don't you select any one of these avatars and believe them to be Parabrahm. Avatars meaning Ram, Krishna. All these avatars were there in Akshardham. Bhagwan had called them. They were there. And Maharaj said, he pointed to all the avatars and said, Why don't you believe them to be Parabrahm, meaning the Supreme Lord? If, you, if your belief is true, you'll be able to manifest in infinite forms and offer your puja all at once. If you believe that this Bhagwan or this Bhagwan and this Bhagwan is Parabrahm, the Supreme Lord, then automatically you'll assume infinite forms and you'll be able to do pujan all at once. Sita Das immediately closed his eyes and prayed to each of the avatars and Raman and Swami as Parabrahm, but nothing happened. Sita Das was disappointed. Sri Hari smiled and suggested, Now believe me to be Parabrahm and let us see what happens. Then Bhagwan said, why don't you understand me and believe me to be Parabrahm, the Supreme Lord of Lords. Sita Das obliged and he manifested into ma infinite forms. Seizing this opportunity, he offered his puja to all of the muktos, avatars and Sri Hari. Raman Swami turned to Sita Das and advised, child, do not ever lose sight of this truth. Sri Hari is Parabrahm. Always follow his Agna. I too do so. When you return from Samadhi, be sure to share your experience with the rest of the sadhus and devotees. So after the pujan was completed, Sital Das came back down to earth in the village. And there he woke up <clears throat> and everyone was all hovered over him thinking what had happened, what had happened. And he started to narrate his whole story of what he experienced and saw in Akshradham. How he performed the pujan of infinite muktos, avatars, even Ramana and Swami, all at once by believing that this Bhagwan Swaminarayan seated here in this village is the Supreme Lord. And as he explained, <clears throat> Everyone was wondered. They were like, wow. So then Bhagwan Swaminarayan said, if all of you want to experience this, then why don't you start chanting too? So everyone started chanting Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan, Swaminarayan. And at once, they all fell. And they all experienced Akshradham there and understood when they came back that Bhagwan Swaminarayan was supreme. And that's how Bhagwan Swaminarayan proved his supremacy through chapters of Samadhi, before starting his ministry, and and you know with his great fleet of saints and devotees, he had to first develop a foundation here on this earth, and that's how he did it. So later on, Sital Das was captivated by this whole experience, and then he's just like you know Maharaj, forget all this, make me into your sadhu because I do not want to do anything but worship your form. And there for the very first time, Bhagwan Swaminarayan initiated his very first sadhu 
and named him vyapkanan swami vyapkanan meaning vyapak meaning he 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 developed assumed so many forms in akshardham due to that his name was vyapkanan swami that's what bhagwan named him he canceled the whole uh pilgrimage trip that he was going to go on and stayed in the service of bhagwan swami narayan and i want to tell you a story about vyapkanan swami as he was traveling around in gujarat by the agna of bhagwan to do satsang vichran so at one time i'm going to read this story to you vyapkanan swami could not bear the sight of the town's ruler hamir khachar who is crying for just like a little child for the loss of his beloved horse vyapkan swami tried to tell him or you know tried to pat him and tried to make him understand that this was just a horse hamir khachar you know it, uh, you'll get another one don't worry don't be grieved Hamir Kachar begged Vyapkanan Swami to bring his horse back to life. Now what we have to look at here is number 1. Bhagwan Swami Narayan's not his greatness yet, but the greatness of his sadhus that he initiated, the power of his sadhus. From this charitra only one can even fathom a little how great can this god be if these saints were like this now the previous avatars incarnations that had come on this earth they performed many many different kinds of charitras divine incidences some that are completely comprehend not compre- comprehensible to the human mind but without a doubt bhagwan swaminarayan was so great that he even instilled his power into his saints and devotees just like how avatars in the past performed charitras in the same way his sadhus and devotees also performed such kind of charitras due to that bhagwan swami narayan's supremacy reigns forever he even till this to after 238 years this ever growing religion more and more people join and join and join this whole it's a divine experience everyone it's spread throughout the world and everyone is whoever joins experiences some kind of change and that is all due to bhagwan swami narayan and his satpurush the satpurush great saint that he has also put here on this earth just for the sake of changing the people's lives and taking them back to akshardham getting back to our story he gave vyapkan and swami an ultimatum swami you either bring my horse back from the dead or i will take my life over the pain of the separation so this hamir kachar was ready to completely kill himself if i can say straight forward if the horse doesn't come back to life Vyapkan Swami emphasized with Hamir Bapu he looked around the room and saw a mosquito nipping at the sadhu standing next to him a mosquito okay he grabbed the soul the jeev out of the mosquito and threw it into the dead horse how many how many of you believe in magic tricks this is a magic trick that i don't think anyone can comprehend but a mosquito was flying flying around and the dead horse was lying and vyapkan swami saw and he developed some compassion for this hamir kachar who was very very deteriorated due to his uh, horse's uh, loss so all vyapkan swami did was just take this mosquito soul and just put it down where the horse was and right there and then that very moment the horse starts to move and come back to life and stands right up everyone around there is shocked unbelievable magic no bhagwan swami narayan's magic these are not any charms 
These are not any kind of uh, spells that they used. But Vyapkanan Swami, all he did was chanted Bhagwan's name, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. And right there and then, due to chanting Maharaj's name, and he threw the soul inside of the horse, and the horse came back to life. News of Vyapkanan Swami's miracle rapidly spread throughout the town. Soon everyone saw it out Swaminarayan sadhus. Anticipating this type of reaction, Vyapkanan Swami left the village the same hour. Vyapkanan Swami and his mandal of sadhus traveled through the Saurasht and came to Gadada a few days later. Sri Hari noticed Vyapkanan Swami approaching. He stood up and welcomed Vyapkanan Swami. Come, O Vyapkanan, you are our Bhagwan. Someone set out a seat for our Bhagwan. So Bhagwan was being a little bit, uh, he had a little sarcasm in his speech. Just when Vyapkanan Swami entered the courtyard, Maharaj is like, come, come, please, our Bhagwan is here. Now, who is Bhagwan? Obviously, Bhagwan is Bhagwan. Vyapkanan Swami is just a sadhu. But he called out, come, Vyapkanan, come. You are now our God. Come, please arrange a seat for him, in sarcasm. Now, obviously, Vyapkanan Swami immediately found out that Maharaj did not like what he just did couple days back when he brought that horse back to life. Vyapkanan Swami and the sadhus were startled. Realizing his mistake, Vyapkanan Swami started to perform dhanvats from where he was standing and begged Sri Hari to forgive him. Meaning he knew that he had made a mistake. He should have first asked Maharaj if he could bring the horse back to life instead of doing it. The sadhus and devotees in Gadara were still confused by Sri Hari's reaction. Sri Hari enlightened them. Vyapkananji brought a dead horse back to life in Botad. Hence, he is Bhagwan. Only Bhagwan reserves the right to decide who lives and who dies. By now, Vyapkanan Swami said, By now, Vyapkanan Swami was kneeling by Sri Hari's feet and, and wimping. Sri Hari continued, Vyapkananji, we have come to Mrityulok, meaning this realm. People are born every day and they must die too. It is the limitation of this world. If we start making expectations for certain individuals out of, the, out of emotional attachment, how will we maintain the order of the universe? Therefore, it is best to console the individual. Speak to him about the temporary and destructible nature of the physical body and the permanent and eternal nature of the Atma. It is only through this Atma Gnan that one can find solace in the de departure of loved ones from this world to the next. Vyapkanan Swami vowed to follow Sri Hari's Agna in the future. Sri Hari recognized that that able and resolute sadhus such as Vyapkan Swami selflessly served him through their faith, bhakti, and seva. And then finally, Maharaj went on his way and it was over. But from this story, we can understand Bhagwan doesn't like those who disobey his agna or his wish. Do you understand? Breaking Bhagwan's law. Just like here in the United States, we have rules in schools, we have rules in, in buildings, we have rules even on the road. Due to that very factor of this one element of rules, this country is considered to be a superpower. This country is considered to be the number one country in the world. This country is considered to be an ideal place to live. But what is the foundation, essence, base of this whole very infrastructure? We can say it's rules. Due to these rules, everyone is happy, able to walk on the sidewalk without any kind of fear of danger. 
or they're able to drive from place to place knowing that everyone will stop during a red light and everyone will go during a green light everyone will stop for a stop sign etc so on and so forth everyone knows in schools that it is not proper to run in the hallways someone might bump into another person and someone might get hurt in office buildings people know where to exit and to take the stairs if there is an emergency all these rules are set and wherever we go we automatically our mind adjust okay now i am in i am in a car so i should follow these rules i am in this building so i should follow these rules i am in this place so i should follow these rules automatically we have this kind of sense in the same way for those children who come to mandir for those kids who come to mandir there should also be a set of rules that they should follow when they come here sure it may be not running around not saying bad words not lying not stealing tablets black tablets not taking anything that does not belong to you all these things pertain to rules even in mandir by following such kinds of rules bhagwan becomes happy santos become happy hari bhaktos become happy but when someone breaks the rules let's give an example if someone does not stop at a red light and keeps going very very fast what happens they get into an accident eventually if someone drinks and drives what happens they get into an accident if someone does not follow the rules of let's say um taking the stairs during a fire in a building and they take the elevator what happens they might get stuck in the elevator all these such kinds of rules bhagwan swami narayan has set not only for this world but also for his religion sampraday this whole sect if we follow these rules bhagwan will become happy but you know what happened to vyapkanand swami it's not that he didn't want to follow the rules but he just developed compassion for hamir khachar because he was crying so much and due to that he decided to bring his horse back to life now vyapkanand swami knew that this was a no no he should first ask maharaj or he should tell maharaj inform him of the whole dilemma instead of him taking this kind of approach due to that maharaj gave him a guilt trip a very very bad guilt trip in front of the assembly due to this vyapkanand swami understood his mistake and he asked for forgiveness and it was over but from this we can learn that even the smallest rules in mandir or outside of mandir if we do not follow bhagwan does not like so this whole lecture we can say was upon sital das and how um, bhagwan swami and supremacy was proved through the chapters of samadhi and then vyapkanand swami how he became vyapkanand swami and him not able to follow bhagwan's rules and due to that maharaj becoming disappointed in him so we can take two things from this lecture number 1 Bhagwan Swami Narayan is supreme almighty and number 2 Bhagwan becomes happy by following his agna by saying this my humble jay swami narayan